Hey guys, Gokesome for the one here, and welcome back to another Leaf Green walkthrough episode. In this episode today, we'll be going through the Rocket Hideout base. Now, you don't need to do this, but I always like to fight the Gym Leader before you go into the Rocket Hideout base, just for those extra levels. We did that last episode, and once you beat the Gym Leader and everything, just heal up, and then you're ready to go straight into the hideout. Now, this hideout isn't necessarily hard if you have high enough leveled Pokemon. It's just the Giovanni fight can be pretty difficult if you don't have the right Pokemon. If you start out with Bulbasaur and Squirtle, then you're totally fine, but if you start out with, um... Charmander, then you'll have some problems. But anyways, you go into the game quarter and you talk to this rocket grunt right here and you get into a fight with him. So he's gonna stand out his Raticate first. Uh, easy, we'll go for a few aerial aces that should take him out and oh my god, one shot! Damn, let's go Robin! We are like 16, level high, 16 levels higher, so I guess that would make sense. But, he's only gonna have two Pokemon on his team. Again, not too hard. If you have a strong Pokemon, you should, you should be able to sweep through this quite easily. Uh, but once you beat this guy, he will actually leave, and I actually had some problems on this when I first started playing the Gen 1 games, but I never knew to walk up to this thing and just click the switch. This is where the Rocket Hideout is. Now, I don't understand why they would make the Rocket Hideout in a super popular place, like a game quarter or a casino, because you'd think people would find out about it sooner or later, but I guess not. But anyways, we're going to fight this first rocket grunt here it is good to fight most of these rocket grunts um just for the levels of course it's always nice to have high levels the elite four later on in this game are going to be super high level so you should get as much training as you can but we're going to aerial ace this eradicate right here i'm pretty sure this trainer has two eradicates on his team one level 21 and another one level 21 pretty high level pokemon again if you have a decently strong Pokemon, you shouldn't have that much trouble. But I think I might switch into SSJ Coco right after this fight. I just want to finish this off quickly. I don't want to deal with Raticate. Raticates can be pretty difficult to fight if they have Hyper Fang. It does a lot of damage. I think it does 50% of your health, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a pretty strong Pokemon. But we're going to win that fight right there. And honestly, um... I'd recommend watching this whole video just to watch where I go in the rocket hideout. It is a pretty confusing area to go through. Um, personally, I somewhat don't know where I'm going in this, but that's just because all the rocket hideouts in this game are so similar that you sometimes just think you're going the right way, but you're not actually. But hopefully, myself can even uh, go through here quite swiftly. I do have a map up, so I shouldn't have too much trouble. But we're going to go for a Shockwave right here. This shouldn't take out the Drowsy. Drowsy does have some pretty decent special defense. But we are a Jolteon, and Jolteon's a pretty decent Pokemon. So he's going to go down right there. Now his last Pokemon should be a Machop. Yes, it is Machop. I don't know. I wish in the later part of these games that they actually allowed the Rocket Grunts to have Machops, or not Machops, Machokes, or Machamps even. Like, that would be challenging. I hope they do that in the new Gen 7 game that's coming out, Pokemon Sun and Moon. They make the Grunts a little harder for whatever villain organization we have. And, no, I cannot go through there yet. You actually do need a key. Uh, it's called the Lift Key. It's not too hard to find. It's kind of funny the way you get it, actually. A Rocket Grunt drops it, which is... Interesting. We're gonna fight this rock run right here. He should have four Pokemon on his team. Yes. Oh, no He's gonna have five Pokemon on his team. I don't even know what this guy has on his team actually You think about it, but we're gonna use shockwave it is super effective against the Zubat, so he should go down easily Um It is nice to have a lower level Pokemon at this point in the game because it's nice to level up through the rocket run bases it's way, way easier to uh, get levels this way than to grind in the grass later on in the game. So if you have a low-level Pokemon, don't use your high-level Mons. Go ahead and use this guy and just train him up. Because again, these characters, right, or these uh, Pokemon right here, aren't actually that hard to take out, as you can see. I have a level 25 Jolteon with Shockwave, which isn't the strongest Electric-type move, and he's kind of going down easily. He's going to send out a Zubat now, and Shockwave should take it out in one shot. Looks like he's going to have a bunch of level 17 on, seventeen Pokemon on his team, but that's not too hard. And we're going to go up to level 26. Nice. But this next puzzle that's coming up after this Rocket Grind is pretty confusing. Uh, I'm not. There are a lot of items you could actually get in this puzzle coming up, but I don't think I'll grab all of them. 
Um, I might grab a few if I run into some, but personally, I just don't like going through that puzzle. It's really annoying. If you hit the wrong, like if you don't even mean to hit the wrong switch, then you'll go a totally different way and have to start over again. I could speed through it, but uh, I don't think I'll do that. So the first one you want to go into is this one and then go into this one right here. Now, again, I told you I'll grab items if we can. You can grab a moonstone right here, which can be pretty useful if you want a Nido King or something. I don't know what these items exactly are. Um, taunt, pretty decent. Um, in competitive, at least. I don't know how decent it would be in this game. Now, let's see if I know where I'm going here. Again, it is pretty confusing because there's so much patches to the point where it's like, oh my god, how, where do I go here? Where do I go? But, uh, that was pretty easy, actually. I think there's another one later on in the game, but that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Let's fight this Rocket Grunt right here. Again, it's super nice. I'm going to go through most of the Rocket Grunts in this base. Just because, again, it's nice to get those levels. And it's way easier to level up than it is into the grass. Because they are level 20 and stuff. And I don't know if this is true or not. It's just something I kind of noticed. It's that even when a Pokemon, like a wild Pokemon, is level 20 in the grass, you get less XP than you would when you versus a trainer. I don't know if they do, did that because if you fight a trainer, it's harder or something. They have better AI, but... Uh, I don't know. That's just kind of something I notice. But he's gonna send out this coughing right here. I think he has two more or another coughing on his team after this. So it shouldn't be too hard. Coughing only really good in its defense, not the greatest in special defense. So if you actually want a coughing on your team, I don't know where to get one exactly, but it would be a pretty decent Pokemon. It can learn Will O Wisp, which uh, later on in the harder battles like the 8th gym or the Leap 4, burning your opponent is super good for uh, lowering their attack and stuff. But SSJ Coco is almost going to go up to level 27. I thought he was going to be able to with that 400 EXP boost, but I guess not. So we're going to fight this Rocket Grunt right here. And this shouldn't be too hard to take him out. I think this guy has a level 22 Grammar and level 22 Coughing. But we'll see. No, he's going to have four Pokemon on his team. So he has a few Rattatas and Raticates then. Um, I don't really memorize which Pokemon or which trainers have which Pokemon because that's kind of hard to do. There's a lot of trainers in this game. But I try my best to, at least. So, not going to go up to level 27 just yet. Actually, SSJ Coco, like, I started at level 25 at the start of this um, Rocket Hideout. And as you can see, I'm almost at level 27, which is pretty decent for only fighting, like, three, four Rocket Grunts, I think. I think we only did three with uh, Jolteon here. So, again, pretty good, decent XP. Uh, I love how fast you go up in levels. But we are going to go up to level 27 here. Nice. Raticate's going to come out. Uh, I think he has one more Rattata Rata on his team. I don't know why they do this Pokemon. I don't know why they have like Rattatas and Raticates at weird levels. I guess for more EXP or and for less difficult battles. But honestly, Pokemon, we need a little more challenge, a little more of a challenge. I know casual players will have a little more trouble with this than competitive players like myself and other people. But still, I think they should make it a little more difficult because Pokemon is one of those easier RPG games if you've uh, played through the games a few times. But we're going to take down that red Rattata right there. I almost called him uh, Rattata. I used to call him Rattata all the time. Oh wait, no, his name is Rattata. I've been calling him Rattata. I haven't... You know what? I don't even remember how to pronounce it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really say uh, Rattata's name too often. But we're going to get that Hyper Potion right there. And that's pretty much in this room. I thought there was another item up there, but I guess not. Okay, so we're going to continue on down here into the Rocket Hideout. I actually only went on that floor because I wanted to fight the Rocket Grunts before we did anything else. But you do go down this next flight of stairs. And let's fight this Rocket Grunt before we do anything else. Uh, again, nice to have you XP. I think I might switch out Coco now uh, after this battle, though, because it's gone up a few more levels. And we have uh, Gyarados, which actually needs to get up to level 30. So we're going to go for a Shockwave, and also, um, that's one struggle with uh, Jolteon if you run it on your team. If you don't have, like, a Thunderbolt and a bunch of other um, electric type uh, TMs and stuff on it, then it's going to run out of PP pretty fast. As you can see, Shockwave is almost out of PP. It's in its e Actually, it has no more PP left. We used all of it. I thought we had, uh, like, three more or something. So we're going to have to switch out of SSJ Coco right here and switch into Roshi. Uh, Roshi, again, Gyarados, one of the better water types in this game. I really do love this Pokemon. 
Um, also, Starmie, I was gonna get it, but then I was like, eh, I've never used Gyarados that much in the Gen 1 game, so I think I'm gonna use him now. And also, Dragon Rage, such an OP move. It does so much damage at the uh, start of the game, which is great. I love it. Always two shots, everything. Once you make it to the Leaf 4 and stuff, don't be using Dragon Rage, though. You're gonna, at least, I would say, four shot the thing, which isn't that fast. Or maybe even three shot, but still. Uh, you'd rather one shot it if you could. Now, oh my god, why is this, I don't understand this, why is it like half cut off, that's so weird, but we're gonna t pick up Frustration right here, which actually isn't that useful, but if you want to pick it up, you can, uh, it could be pretty useful if you're playing through these games to, um, get competitive mods or something like that. Anyways, this is the, one of the puzzles that are a little more confusing than the other ones, and if you come over here, you can pick up a rare candy, which is pretty useful, um, okay, we gotta go back here. I mostly just wanted to get that rare candy, and I thought we would be able to uh, go into the next part, but I guess not. So where are we going right here? Again, this is pretty confusing. Almost walked down the wrong one there, and we're going to fight this Rocket Grunt right here. Stop meddling with Team Rocket. Too bad, man. I got to take down the evil organization. I may be only 10 years old, but I could still do some damage. That's another thing that I love about Pokemon, is that you you're fucking 10. You're 10 and you're taking down an evil organization. If you were doing that in the real real world, you would have to be some superhuman or something because you definitely would have gone shot by now. Uh, because last time I checked, we didn't fight with uh, weird yellow hybrid dogs or something like that. We definitely fight with guns and fists, which hurts way more. I wonder what it would be like if Pokemon actually had guns and stuff. I don't think... Actually, no, there was actually an anime episode. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it um, because it was taken off the air for uh, the US and North America in general, I think. It was the Secret of Dratini. It was something like that. It was the Dratini episode. It had Claire and everything in it. And I think there was Hitler and Meowth in it and stuff. It was super weird. If you guys want to check out that video, just search up banned Pokemon episodes on the inter on YouTube and a Jay Woods video should show up and you should find it there. There's a bunch of other banned episodes that are definitely worth looking at. Um, just don't watch one of them. It's a uh, secret of the Por- I don't remember what it's called. It's Secret Swords of Soldier Porygon or something. But it has a lot of strobe lights, so if, you're epile if you have like seizures and stuff, then... Uh, Definitely shouldn't watch it, but we're gonna take down this grunt right here Easy exp actually Roshi's about to die. I didn't even notice that we were talking about banned Pokemon episodes and stuff And that happened if you come over here. You can pick it up pick up an item black glasses Which I'm pretty sure boosts dark type moves which is actually pretty useful if you have a dark type move on your Pokemon If you come over here, you can pick up a max ether which comes in handy later on in the game Now this is the rocket before we do that actually pick up snatch over here if you want but this is the Rocket Grunt that just magically drops the key when you beat him. Like, if you're gonna punch him or something, okay, yeah, you, he's probably gonna drop. He's gonna be hurt and his arm's gonna be weak after it. But if you're gonna fight his Pokemon, somehow he's gonna get scared and be like, oh no, this weird dog electric thing's fighting me. I better drop the lift key that's uh, keeping the boss safe upstairs. But, uh, let's switch into Roshi. I don't know if Roshi will die from anything that this coughing throws. Unless he goes for, like, smoke screen or something. But we're going to get that Intimidate off, which is lowering his attack. So maybe we'll live this tackle. Actually, we definitely live that tackle. That was a critical hit. Damn, let's go. Let's go, Roshi. Now, this is a really another useful thing uh, about Dragon Rage. It goes, again, it does base 40 damage no matter what. So no matter what the defense is or anything. So if you have a Pokemon, normally like Gyarados, who is a attacking mon and you're versing a coughing, you're going to be able to take it out easily just because, again, Dragon Rage, such a good move. But Zubat's going to come out now, and Astonish, I don't know why they don't give them better moves later on in the game. All the Grunts have Astonish on their Zubats, and it's such a bad move. Same as Leech Life, which is uh, not that bad of a move at it the start but again once you make it to the later parts of the game it's like uh oh no i dropped the lift key thanks for that man i appreciate it <laughs> but anyways once you get that lift key you could actually go back to the elevator where uh i don't know if you guys saw it earlier it was in the other puzzle room which we'll go back to right now and then you'll be able to fight the rocket grunt now this rocket base isn't that long honestly um the longer one comes up in saffron city 
later on. And I think I actually want to grab this item over here before we continue on. I wanted to grab it earlier, but uh, I kind of just wanted to get through this part quickly. So if you want to pick up this XP, it's pretty useful. Uh, X speeds are decently useful if you don't have uh, the strongest Pokemon during the Elite Four or during a gym battle even. Um, okay, where are we going here? We gotta figure out where we're going. Again, these do definitely get a little bit confusing after a while. And while doing a walkthrough, actually, and talking and stuff... Uh, oh, no! Well, whatever, we can pick up this item if you want to grab that Super Potion. Pretty useful. Okay, I finally made it through. I was definitely getting stuck in there for some reason. It usually never happens to me. That's like the easier puzzle in the game. Or one of the easier puzzles in the game. Okay, so once you make it to the fourth floor, you come up to the top half of here, and you have to fight these two trainers before the door opens up, which is kind of weird, but... Eh. Doesn't really matter. These shouldn't be too hard. These are actually one of the harder um, rocket grunts in the base, though. Uh, they have a Sand Slash and an Arbok on their teams. Now, we definitely actually have to switch out right here. I keep forgetting to switch out of Coco, which is probably not the smartest thing in the world. But let's switch into Roshi. Hopefully, Roshi won't die. We do have Intimidate on him, so I think if we switch in, um, Sand Slash's attacks won't do that much. Unless he goes for. Uh, uh, Okay, it went for a poison sting. I thought he would go for a sand attack or something, but we did get poison. That is not good. We might die this turn, depending if we kill him or not. I still think the poison gets activated, though. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. I don't think it does. Maybe it doesn't. We're going to go up to level 28, though, with uh, Jolteon here. And perfect. I love these gens. We don't die from the poison if we kill the Pokemon. Okay, we're going to have to switch into Robin here, though, just because... If we don't, then we're going to die, definitely. We can't take him out with one Water Pulse, I don't think. Arbok is a pretty decently spawn strong Pokemon. But he's going to use that Intimidate on us. That's not good. Let's go for an Aerial Ace. Take him out. Ekans going down in one shot. Level 36, Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a super strong f flying type in this game. I love it. I definitely do love it. But he's going to send out a Sand Flash now. And again, this is probably one of the harder gr grunts in the base. Just because he does have a higher level Pokemon. And he also has a an evolved Pokemon, which you don't see too often from these grunts. He's gonna go for a defense curl. Not really gonna help him anymore since he is at red health. And um, Aerial Ace was doing a decent amount of damage before. So we're gonna go up to the next Rocket Grunt here now. And before we do that, I better switch out of my Jolteon right here. Um, let's switch into Robin, since, uh, Roshi's about to die as well. I think if we take a th few more steps even, he's gonna die from the poison. I really don't like how they had that in the older games. Uh, they took it out in the l newer games, like, uh, X and Y and Oris, which was nice, but hopefully they also take it out in Sun and Moon, because, really, I really don't like when you take steps, it kills your Pokemon with the poison, and it kind of makes no sense. Like, if they're in their Pokeballs and they're resting in there, don't you think that maybe they would uh, not be getting hurt too often by the poison? But we're going to go up to level 37 right here, and Sandshrew is going to come out now. Now, this is the guy with the Arbok. Arbok is probably going to be a harder Pokemon to deal with just because he can intimidate us. And I think we already got intimidated once by Ekans, so we'll be minus two at that point. Um, which is going to be hard to take out the seconds with this Robin once we switch out here. Uh, but I'm not really going to do that because Robin is a higher level than him, so it will take like two shots or so to take him out, but um, I don't think he'll take more than that, hopefully. But Aerialist is going to come out. Will it take him out in two shots? Nice! Robin, I love you. Base 60 Aerial Ace. I wish we had... I think we have Fly on him. I don't remember if we do yet. Uh, I don't think we have Fly just yet, but... Because I haven't played this in a while, as you guys can tell. I haven't made an episode, a Leaf Green walkthrough episode in quite a while so it's kind of hard to know but there's Giovanni right there and before I fight him I'm actually gonna switch him on my light bulb here just because light bulb will be able to take out most of his Pokemon now Giovanni again like I was saying earlier on in the episode it is harder to beat him if you start out with Charmander unless you kept Metal Claw or have Brick Break on your Charmander um, but even then, they have decently high special attack, or not special attack, they have decently high defense, so again, it's going to be harder to take him out. But if you start out with Bulbasaur, like me, or even Squirtle, you shouldn't have that much troubles with these guys. You should be able to uh, one-shot all of them. But he's going to have a level 25 Onix, a level 24 Rhyhorn, and a level 29 Kangaskhan. Again, Rhyhorn, a pretty tanky mon in its defense, but since we are using a special attack right here, Giga Drain, 
uh, we shouldn't have that much trouble. And we should also go up to level 34 here, which is nice. All my Pokemon going up a lot of levels in this episode, which I love. Uh, I don't think it'll be too long until we reach it to level, um, or go up to level 40 or something. But this last Pokemon here is Kangaskhan, which is his strongest Pokemon, and if you don't take this thing out right away, it has a lot of HP, and on top of that, it has super good attacking power. So, well, it didn't do that much there, but that's because Light Bulb, uh, or Vol Venusaur in general is a strong Pokemon in its defense. But if he goes for Mega Punch or something, that's going to be a, doing a decent amount of damage. But we're going to take out Kangaskhan anyways. We did get the critical hit, so we didn't get a chance to use a potion or anything like that, which is good. And the boss, Giovanni, was taken down. Now once you win, he'll give you $2,900, and on top of that, he will give you the Sylph Scope, which is a useful item in this game. It'll help you on later in uh, Lavender Town. So anyways, I'm going to end off this episode though, guys. That's pretty much it for the Rocket Hideout. If you want to escape, I don't even know. Can you use an escape rope? Let's check here. I haven't used an escape rope in a while. So yeah, you can use the escape rope in here, which is pretty nice. But again, I'm going to end off the episode here, guys. In the next episode, we probably will go through Lavender Town and use the self scope then. So anyways, if you guys like this video... Remember, tell me what you didn't like and what you also liked in the comment section down below. Then I can improve my videos and make them more entertaining for you guys. And yeah, so anyways, if you guys like this video, shoot that like button with Kamehameha.